The Master's Diary. Co-powered by Salesforce. We bring companies and customers together. Hello and welcome to a special edition of the We On Masters Diary with me, Digvijay Singh Deo. My guest today is a master in all sense of the word, despite being just 21. He could have been in college, but Red Bull athlete Armand Mondo Duplantis decided instead to conquer world sport. It gives me great pleasure to welcome World Athletics' Male Athlete of the Year, Mondo Duplantis, to We On. Uh, 2020, Mondo, was a rather difficult year for the world, but for you, a year you will remember forever, especially after being named uh, Male Athlete of the Year, Mondo. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, 2020 for me started off basically perfect. I had, you know, at the time, which was a, a, a you know, close to perfect indoor season and I was able to break the world record twice. So, you know, I can't really complain about that. And, you know, everything seemed like it was just right in the world and then maybe two weeks later after the indoor season the whole pandemic started to set into the world and then everything just kind of came to a screeching halt and then um you know after that the olympics was postponed the european championships was postponed but you know i was able to still come away with an outdoor season i was able to get some good marks in towards the end even though it was limited spectators and a lot of restrictions but um you know i was world athlete of the year so you know, I, I, can't, I can't complain with the things, the way things worked out. I'm, you know, it was definitely worse for a lot of other people. Yes, that's true. It was pretty bad for the rest of the world. But I'm just going to run by a list, Mondo, of the previous recipients of this honor. And you will know where I'm going with this. Uh, there's Carl Lewis, there's Michael Johnson, Haile Gibra Selassie, Shisha Malgarouj, Usain Bolt, Renaud Lavilleni, uh, fellow Paul Walter like you, Elliot Kipchoge last year. Those are legends of your sport. And you have just turned 21 and are already being described as the present and future of athletics. How does such a heavy mantle sit with you? It's, you know, it, it, it's still pretty new to me. You know, it, it, this kind of whole thing started when I broke the world record for the first time. And then everybody was kind of asking me if I thought I was going to be able to fill Usain Bolt's shoes. And, you know, that's one of the most common questions that I get now. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't worry about it too much. I can only do what I can do. And, you know, we do a different event. We're different people. We're just different humans. So, um, you know, I, I go out there. I just try to jump high. I try to try to be me. I try to be genuine and you know, I just try to put on a show and, you know, everything else just kind of works itself out. But what a show you put on in 2020. You would also agree, Mondo, that in that your sport, in a sense, is in very fine hands. I was at the Rio Olympics in 2016 and all the talk there was about how athletics was going to struggle once uh, Bolt and Samo Farah moved on. But some really exciting times with Carsten Warholm, Noah Lyles. Sherika Jackson, Dina Asher-Smith, Sifan Hassan, all coming into their own since then. And I've obviously missed quite a few of your fellow athletes. Yeah, I, I think that's true. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of great people in, you know, in a lot of different events. So, uh, you know, there, there's, that's, that's how sports works. You know, there's, you know, once one person leaves, another guy steps up. And I think that's just always the case. And that always will be the case. So, you know, um, yeah, I think athletics doesn't have to worry. There's going to be, there's going to be, some good results down the road. Uh, Mondo, during the pandemic, I did speak to Lord Sebastian Co, who heads your sport, and uh, credit to World Athletics to be the first sport to have a calendar of events, even as the pandemic raged all over. What a year for athletics! So many world records, especially in the middle distance events. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy, really, because you know a lot of us were so limited on what we can do training wise, because. We didn't have access to all of our facilities that we were used to, and especially me at least. And so, you know, training was a little bit tougher, you know, during this 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 time. So it was really surprising to see how great of everybody's performance was. Honestly, I, I don't even I don't even understand it myself. I, I guess it's just because everybody thought it was the Olympic year. So kind of everybody was in that Olympic shape, maybe. I don't know. I mentioned the awards, uh, Mondo, a short while back and at the World Athletics Awards. It wasn't just you, lots of awards coming into the family and the extended family as well. 
with the Garden Challenge also winning one. The one you, Lavalini and world champion Sam Kendricks put on that show. True, true. Yeah, we, we you know, my parents winning the, the Coaching Achievement of the Year award was it's truly an honor for our family because, you know, we have this whole thing is a family operation. And, you know, my parents are my coaches. And so they've been with me the, every step of the way. And, you know, they're the reason for my success. So to see them get some of the credit that they deserve is, it's, you know, it's really special. And um, also the Garden Clash, which was just great innovation, I think, by Renault Lavalini when we, uh, we were able to do a live sporting event in the heart of the pandemic when, you know, there was no live sports on television. So, um, you know, we, we, we had a lot of successes this year, my family and, you know, my competitors. Right, talking about your family, a complete sporting family, starting with your father and mother who you mentioned and of course your siblings as well. So I just want to ask you something offbeat. What are the conversations around the dinner table like? I mean, at the end, we're just a normal family. I mean, no, we're not normal. <laughs> we, 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 we like sports. We like to talk a lot about sports, of course. Um, so we like to talk about pole vault. We like to talk about baseball. My middle brother's a baseball player. You know, we like to talk about a lot of things, though. We like to just, you know, at the end of the day, be a family and mess around, argue, be stupid, you know, have fun together. And, uh, you know, I think we find a good balance between, you know, the two of, like, my parents being my trainers and also being, you know, my mom and dad. And uh, during the pandemic, Mondo, how many times did you all talk about those two world records? Was it the one the elder brothers ripped you about? No, we, we don't talk about that much at all, really. I feel like I, I feel like I don't really talk about it much at all. I the only times I talk about the world records really is just when I get asked by like in interviews and stuff. I um, you know I I don't want to dwell on it too much. I think it's great, and it's I think it's really cool to hold the title as the world record holder now. But um, you know I always want to be looking forward, and I I don't want to I don't want to just sit here and and boast boast on how great my world record was when I think that I could always be doing better and I could, you know, go go out there and do it again and achieve even higher heights. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't sit on it too much. Yes, you spoke, uh, Mondo, about how 2020 was tough for a lot of people globally. But personally for you, what did that uh, period of shutdown teach you? You were on an incredible high, having set the highest mark in pole vault within consecutive weeks. And then within a month, you were grounded. The, I, I think that the, um, you know, when, when the pandemic first started to set in in, in March, it, it really taught me how important relationships are. And, um, you know, when everything shut down, I, was, I wasn't really able to train at the facility that I trained at in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I, I moved back with my parents to their house. And my brother that lived in New York City that I don't get to see that much, he came back to Louisiana because his job got shut down. My middle brother plays baseball around the United States. He came back to Louisiana and we were all together in the same household for the first time since uh, we were just kids, maybe since I was 12 years old or so. And it, it was really special to be able to spend those times with my family. You know, it's tough because we didn't get re really able to go out and do much, but it was really special to spend some really quality time with my family. And, you know, I think that was the silver lining in the situation. And, you know, you got to realize how just important those relationships really are. Yes, I think all of us got some quality time at home. Not exactly the reason how we should have got it, but then that was the way 2020 panned out. But, uh, you know, just a short while back, we were seeing some visuals of you uh, at home. And the journey to those world records started in the back garden, didn't it, Mondo? That back garden in that very house which you are sitting and talking to me. You were vaulting at the age of three and by the age of seven, you were setting records. We had Charlie Woods competing with his father, Tiger Woods, at the PNC Championships in December. Uh, you know, and it was too early perhaps to grasp the magnitude of what you were achieving at that age. But how difficult is it to rise to expectations when you land up an event and then everyone is saying, oh, he's going to break another work, uh, world record? Yeah, I I mean, I've, I've had expectations on me from a very young age. You're, you're pretty right about that. But um, I, I, I've i always had huge expectations of myself. And ever since I was just a little kid, I always thought that I was capable of breaking the world record and that, you know, I thought that if everything went right for me, that eventually I was, would be able to, you know, get up to heights like the world record and, you know, be chasing for Olympic gold. So I think that my, 
my expectations of myself always equaled what other people thought of me. So that was always a, a good thing for me to where I never like stressed out about what other people thought because I know what I thought of myself and that's the most important to me. So um, it it's, um, you know, it it, it kind of, you know, it's been like this way for a while, but I know the expectations are higher than they, they've ever been right now for sure. Yes, expectations. What sports person doesn't like expectations, Mondo? Because, you know, that's how it is. But there's also a certain romance about pole vault as a discipline in athletics, obviously due to the feats of Sergei Bukka, who single-handedly raised the bar and the profile of the event. And even Yelena Isenbaeva, who for me was the pole vaulter I saw compete at the Beijing Olympics. Now, ultimately, like a lot of athletics events, it is just you and that pole in a huge stadium. It is as lonely as they come. Yeah, no, it's it's super true. It's super lonely in the sense of, you know, your your struggles are all you. And you know, when when you got you got to figure things out yourself. Sometimes nobody else can go do anything for you. It's not a team sport to where, you know, you have a teammate that can pick you up or help help assist you in any way. It's you know, you have a coach that can give you good tips and all, but. At the end of the day, you have to go out there and you got to get it done, and you know you you got to get past get past your struggles. So it can be lonely at times, but I think I think I like that aspect of it every once in a while because you know it makes it super difficult, but it makes it you know really rewarding also. And who wouldn't want two world records and erasing that other outdoor? Record. It is rewarding after all, isn't it? Isn't that why we all compete in sport? And uh, what people don't see though, Mondo, is the numerous times you fail in the event. Now the headlines are obviously the moment you clear that bar, but it is attempt after attempt till you get it right. Can you tell me what was going through your mind when you landed on the mat after breaking those two world records first in Torun and then in Glasgow in February? You know, when it, when I broke the world record for the first time in Tarun, is you know, it's such a crazy feeling. It was like just this rush of emotions that you know, kind of just flooded through my body. And I, you know, it, it's still hard to believe that it actually happened. I always thought that I always dreamed of the day that it would come in the moment. And you know, the second I kind of go over that bar and I was falling down the pit, I realized what was happening. It was like I felt like I blacked out for a second. I kind of went unconscious. I was just running around, just yelling, going crazy, and it's you know it's just one of those moments to where you don't get that many moments i don't think in a in a, in a lifetime and you know it's something that i know i'll, I'll cherish and it's going to be one of one of the more special ones yes just seeing visuals of you celebrating with your mother those moments as you said will come very rarely over the course of a career but you were also undefeated through the year and uh, you then broke the outdoor mark of bubka in rome in september now for summer of my vintage Pole vault was always about Sergei Bubka. He sort of defined the event, like Nadia defines gymnastics or Michael Phelps does with swimming. That would have been a very significant moment for you, considering that you too would have grown up hearing his name as your father was a pole vaulter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bubka is is you know, yeah, it's still kind of the name of pole vaulting, and I think a lot of people still think of Bubka as the best pole vaulter to ever live. So. Um, you know, I, I want to be the best poker that ever live, and I, I want to be known as that. And um, I want to go out there and I want to do the things that, that he did, but, you know, make him even better. I want to jump even higher. I want to accomplish more. I want to, um, you know, I want to do things that nobody's ever seen before. So I know that I have a long ways to go, but, you know, I, I'm, I have a good start right now. Yes, you're 21. You have a long way to go to achieve higher and higher marks in your event. Uh, I even remember that on one of your world records, you were given some advice by Renault Lavillani, who had in fact held the previous world record for a while. But this was remarkable in a sense, Mondo, to see two tough competitors putting rivalry aside uh, for the sake of the event. And obviously, we also had the ultimate garden challenge as well. Remarkable camaraderie. Yeah, I mean, me, me and Renault have a have a great, you know, have a great friendship. I mean, me and the other public I've had just kind of a great brotherhood we've developed, and um, you know, Renault's always never been shy to to lead me up, you know, to give me a hand and help me out, give me a few tips. I've I've went to France, Clermont Ferrand, to his hometown twice now to go for a training camp and train with him for a week or two, and um, he's 
always been been yeah always been willing to to give me a few tips on what he thinks i can do to take it to the next level and even take myself to, to heights like the world record and you know i um i think that you know the world record it's you know he, he was he was a part of that there was a lot of people that that were a reason for for me breaking that record and you know everything leading up to that and he had a little bit to do with that for sure Yes, but that camaraderie you're talking about is going to be tested at Tokyo in six to seven months' time. Obviously, you are Top Gun going into the Olympics, but pressure, sort of the strange things at an Olympics. Remember the last one where Thiago Braz uh, beat Renault to win the gold and even the great Bupka had just won Olympic title. How do you approach that mega event considering you're going in as favourite? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pavel's, it's it's un. Bobo has a lot of surprises and, you know, anything can happen on any given day. It's also sports. That's just kind of how sports work. So, um, you know, we don't know how the conditions are going to be. We don't know how everybody's going to be feeling, how I'm going to be feeling. And so, you know, anything can happen on any day. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to try to get, make sure I'm in the best shape possible on that day. And I'm just going to give it my best. And, you know, everything else just works itself out. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to try to end up on the top of that podium. Okay, now uh, talking about the Olympics, the International Olympic Committee, Japan, they all seem determined, Mondo, to host the Olympic Games. They're calling it a shining beacon for humanity to overcome this virus, but there will be restrictions on athletes. Are you prepared to make those sacrifices, especially the lack of physical contact, which goes against the very grain of the Olympic Brotherhood? Because, you know, I've been to three Olympics, the last three, and the mixing of people from around the globe is what makes it so, so special. Yeah, I've never been to Olympics, so I don't really know how it works, but I can imagine it's very special and, you know, meeting meeting people from everywhere around the world and in all kinds of sports is, is a really special thing. And, um, yeah, I know it's going to be really different, but, you know, the world's just different now, so we kind of just got to get used to it. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, for me, restrictions or not, I just, I just really hope the Olympics happens. Okay, before I go, Mondo, I just want to slip in one final question. Now, 2020 will be remembered for tragedy and also the never-say-die attitude of sport, which was determined to push back and give people who were locked up at home so much joy. But the sportsperson across the globe also did another major thing. He or she said enough is enough and they stood up against racism, against racial injustice, against inequality. Athlete pressure also forced the IOC uh, in a sense, to postpone the Olympics in March. In today's world, it is a very important voice, one which forces authorities to take note. Oh, you asking me? Yeah, I mean, I, no, absolutely. I think that, you know, athletes have a really, you know, especially nowadays when we have social media and everybody's so inter inter interconnected and, you know, everybody can follow each other so closely now that, you know, athletes have a, have a really big voice now, especially when they have a big following. So, you know, they can really get their voice out and, you know, and really, sh you know, tell the people what they believe in and what they think should change. And, you know, that it really, uh, you know, I think that it's it's shown over the past few years, you know, some like the the biggest stars like LeBron James and, you know, a lot of the, the big athlete names that can, you know, when they their voice is out there, they can really change stuff in the world. Yes, and hopefully athletes the world over continue to raise their voices, even as you raised the bar in the pole vault. The Olympic motto, motto goes faster, stronger and higher. And if you come to think of it, it sort of defines your event all too well. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's perfect. Yes, Mondo Duplantis, many thanks for your time and wishing you the best for another record-breaking year. And a happy new year to you and your loved ones as well. That's it then on this very special edition of the Master's Diary. Goodbye. The Master's Diary. Co-powered by Salesforce. We bring companies and customers together.